Hello YouTube, Robin Pumpkinhead here, and welcome to part 3 of our Haunted Subway build. And today we're going to be concentrating on the ghost train element. So welcome to part 3 uh, of our Halloween specials. And uh, as always, I'm ably assisted by the Haunted Subway construction crew of Billy Bob with his two heads and Jim. Uh, and the main constituent part of today's video is, yep, the Duplo push and go train motor. Uh, this came in a few Duplo sets that are currently on the market, one of which is the Steam Train 10874. Uh, and it's got a light color reader on the bottom that you can kind of see shining there that enables it to be controlled, just like we covered in part one. Uh, and if you haven't seen part one or part two of this uh, video stream so far, then do go back uh, and watch it because it'll make a lot more sense uh, in order. Uh, so what I won't be doing today is going back to the subway station that we looked at in part two, even though you've given me loads of suggestions for improvements. I'm going to uh, be doing all of those and anything that stems from this video as well all as part four when I install everything into the Lego room and have it all running together with all the uh, uh, minifigures populating the scene and all the rest of it. So that should be a great finale on Halloween's Eve uh, on Friday. But for now, we're going to focus on the train. Now, it's been long in the plan to have a second subway station uh, to augment the first one and make it a whole system underneath the tables of Brick Nottingham. Uh, but it wasn't until relatively recently that I decided that that station would be haunted. And it was largely because of all these wonderful uh, hidden side ghost pieces that we were getting that I was accumulating, just because they're so fantastic, but without a real uh, use for them. So I thought I would have a haunted uh, subway station that was kind of a lot to do with the one before, but also very different in what was actually occurring inside. Uh, and that would use all of these ghost pieces uh, and have probably the Ghostbusters sorting it all out, because that's what they're there for. Uh, so the first plan was not to have a ghost train at all, and it was actually to have uh, the normal track with the train whizzing on by, and to have one of those pink rivers of ooze that you see on the film Ghostbusters 2. And if you haven't seen that, basically it was a great big stream of, well, kind of evil malevolent goo that was pink um, that was flowing in the uh, disused subway stations underneath New York. So I thought if I just bought loads and loads and loads, and I mean absolutely loads, of one by one round uh, plates uh, in trans pink, I could make this wonderful pink river of goo and have all of the ghosts sort of kind of leaping out of it. But um, rather than do that, I decided to kind of ditch that, because after all, it is just a big band of pink, I thought I would come into uh, the idea of bringing in a ghost train. Uh, and obviously, this is going to be a ghost subway train. Uh, and I want it to have a lot in common with the existing subway train that I've got. So you can kind of see that there is a connection, much like I have done with my station in part two. But I also want it, like in my station in part two, to be very different as well. Very haunted and very interesting in its own right. So quite a tall order, you might think. But really, apart from that, I had no specific agenda that I really had to tick or any particular look that I had in mind to uh, go ahead with. Now, of course, uh, as part of the Hidden Side sets, there is a ghost train in that. It's got great big wings coming out. I mean, really, it's a big cargo train, isn't it? So that wouldn't be very suitable. There's also a ghost train that's actually a monster fighter set from back in the day, but that's kind of a big surface uh, steam train. So that wasn't much use for inspiration either. So I thought I'm really going to have to go back to absolute basics and start from scratch. So what I thought I'd do is take you through my entire design process, or at least the first portion of that, uh, in Lego Digital Designer. Right, so here we are in Lego Digital Designer, which is the program I use to design the majority of my builds. Uh, there are many alternatives, and I'd probably suggest starting with one of those other programs like Studio, uh, which is uh, found on the BrickLink site, just because this one isn't supported anymore, so it's not getting any of the new pieces, but I'm very familiar with it, so a lot quicker with it, so that's why I'm still using it. 
Uh, anyway, in the development of this ghost train, uh, I went through quite a number of ideas. And the first thing I do when designing something completely new like this is get some of the available pieces uh, laid out in the available colours, because not all pieces are available in all colours, of course, uh, just to help inspire me. Uh, and I knew I wanted to have some ghosts that would be the conductors on this train. I also knew it needs some train windows, and you can get this arched one in spring green, for example. Uh, and I wanted to think about the different colour palette being these muted tones we've already seen in the station. Uh, and I really wanted to get some of these sort of teeth pieces in, uh, just so it was looking more ghostly itself. So, as I say, I went through a lot of different designs. Uh, and the first one isn't really a design for the ghost train. It's just the uh, existing train that I have running on my subway, which I thought I'd use kind of for reference, for scale. And if I wanted it to look exactly the same as this, to kind of maybe just do it in a different colour palette, so you can see this is just the front engine, and that's all I'm going to do as part of my ghost train build. Uh, that one's got the power functions motor as part of it. Uh, and that's because, uh, well, I didn't really know about the Duplo base that we're going to be using to power this uh, train uh, at this point. So when I started designing this, I was going to make it power functions or even powered up if I wanted it to do the reversing feature. But it was sort of early days, so I just ploughed on without worrying about what the exact power source was going to be. So the first stage of the draft was just to mess around with the colours, kind of have it exactly the same as the one we've already got, but just with different palette, which is kind of what we've done with the station to a degree. So I wanted to include lots of this spring green colour, because that's really interesting. Change all the lights up to sort of uh, neon trans green as well, and even have the conductor on one of these hinge pieces uh, kind of coming right out of the wall of the train, sort of leaping out at somebody on the platform, very scary indeed, <laughs> to sort of attack them. Uh, and then all the other windows would be this trans green as well. So you can see that just that would have been really quite good fun, actually. So, you know, I could have almost stopped there, but I kept thinking. So onwards from there, I decided, what if... I had green slime all running round the entire train carriage. Now, I haven't finished it because I was just sort of playing with ideas at this point. But you can see I was using these kind of tooth pieces to be the bottom of sort of slime trails that were covering some windows and leaving some unobscured, all at different heights. And I thought that might be really good fun. But I think a lot of these ideas were limited by the pieces that are available uh, in that you can't get them all in certain colours. And I didn't know if that would look good as kind of a slime train or not. So I kept going. Next, I thought, well, what if I went for just a really dark black train that was really mysterious, still with all of the trans neon green uh, glassware and lights and with a kind of muted color palette for my three color stripe. So instead of red, white and uh, blue, it'd be dark red. Uh, what did I have here? Spring green and dark blue uh, and indeed that was the color palette I was going to do on the stripes of the pillars that make up part of my uh, haunted subway station but unfortunately even with that you can't get uh, two by two round bricks uh, round plates rather in uh, the color of dark blue and dark red so it was a non-starter there as well. So I thought that train was quite cool, but it's just black, isn't it? So not the best idea, but I still had the, the conductor leaping out the front of this train. So then I went on to a similar idea to the slime one, but more inspired by a horror movie, really. What if the entire carriage was just running with like a stream of blood? <laughs> Very spooky indeed. I mean, right out of a horror movie, that one. So uh, you can see that that was quite, uh, uh, well, I think quite a good design in a way, but it becomes very hard to actually attach these pieces to the structure. I hadn't finished it there, but you can see it starts to become a real mess of uh, modified bricks and so on. Um, so I wasn't really sure if that's where I was going to go, but I was prepared to come back to it. Uh, but then briefly, I decided to do an all spring green coloured train, which is a bit horrible, really, actually, with hindsight, and maybe even put like a skull feature on the front to make it a real ghost train. 
Uh, but I wasn't really getting anywhere good with the uh, skull. And I'm not sure about these arched pieces, which are the ones that are available in Spring Green, because they kind of look a bit too, I don't know, castly or churchy or something like that. So that one was abandoned. Uh, and then I just started to play with a different idea, which was to have dark red instead of the black. Uh, and I was going with that for quite a while. But then the big uh, decision that was quite a change was to have a great big ghost face hanging out the side of a big hole uh, in the side of the train and maybe even to use a set of these sort of finger type pieces to be its claws and maybe it's sort of clawing this huge sort of ghost-like spirit is kind of clawing its way out of the train with its sort of hands something like that Ooh, very spooky so I really liked that idea and started to play with that, uh, but actually on paper instead. So as you can see, my design process was quite long and quite thorough, at least the first part of it anyway. Uh, and I was largely focusing on replicating the existing subway car, but with some sort of twist. Uh, and that would tie it very much in with the current other train. But the more I thought about it, the more I thought that basically, if this was a huge ghost train with a spirit kind of trying to rip its way out that maybe it would have been a train crash or the result of a train crash or these dead spirits or something like that um, that happened many years ago and therefore the train might be kind of similar in its sort of branding and so on but might actually be a much more old-fashioned type uh, build representing a train from uh, yesteryear rather than a modern train from today. So that kind of was another idea that was sort of coming into my mind. And I decided to move on to paper just because I wanted to do something a bit different to get away from that original train. Uh, and I was quite successful, actually, because I got a large piece of scrap paper and I thought I'd just sort of start in one corner and just explore with a pen, which is not usually a process I do, actually. But I was very successful because I only ended up drawing one <laughs> little sketch because I was so happy with my first concept idea. Now, it's not detailed, so don't get your hopes up. Uh, it's literally just this, which is sort of what I was starting to do in LEGO Digital Designer there. But it's a huge ghostly face that represents probably all the tortured souls that are sort of built up into one malevolent spirit with these claws kind of trying to gouge their way out of the side of the train, kind of alien style or something like that. So I thought that would be a really good idea. Uh, and then as for the rest of the uh, idea, uh, it could be a totally different shape. So I decided to go for kind of a curved roof as opposed to the angular, more modern one. And because I knew at this stage that I'd probably be using the uh, Duplo uh, train motor that I'd probably have an eight wide uh, depth because this is four Duplo studs deep so it'll be eight normal studs which meant I could get a door on the sides on the ends basically which would be a much different style from my modern train rather than having them on the sides because they would just get really uh, interfered with by this huge ghostly feature so that is pretty much all of my design process before the final build, which I won't spoil right now. I mean, you've already seen the thumbnail, right? But, you know, hey-ho. So let's start the build. Now, definitely the biggest downside of using this Duplo push-and-go motor is the fact that it is, well, Duplo. And it's got these large Duplo studs on the top that we can't directly connect to Lego studs uh, without kind of an intermediate uh, layer. Uh, and what I mean by that is using large two by something or other bricks, in this case, two by eight in black, to go over the large Duplo studs because these tubes are designed to actually fit with them perfectly. So the two systems are compatible. So it's definitely not cheating. Um, but to create a layer that basically means that I can start building with normal bricks on top of the top of this base. Now the bad point that remains is that this is now incredibly tall and deep. So even though this is going to be the floor of the train itself, we're already about, what, four bricks high or something like that. Now I figure in my station that'll just make it a lot more visible because we've got sort of, well, a three brick high platform. So that's not the end of the world. And also given this is a ghost train, I kind of think it will be a bit ethereal and it'll be kind of like it's sort of flying or floating. It's not like it's a sort of streamline uh, modern uh, 
carriage. So there we go. So I've got some black bricks around the outside. And I'm just going to fill the middle bit with these ones, which are uh, medium nougat color. And the only reason why I'm using them is because uh, they're less useful than the black ones and we aren't going to see them. So there we go. So I've got a nice firm base to build our train on now that has got normal sized Lego studs. Right, so then I'm going to be building ooh, with some plates. And this is the actual floor of the carriage itself. And although I've been forced to use uh, square bricks on this layer, because unfortunately curved uh, large bricks either don't work with the layer underneath or um, aren't the right size. Um, but I'm going to go back to a curved setup now by putting on some curved plates on each of these four corners. And that will hopefully make it look a little less blocky than it would otherwise. So there we go. Then I'm going to have some black plates around the outside. And much like my other um, subway train, I'm going to have some sort of uh, handrail type poles on each of the four corners to try and make it look uh, a little similar to that one and just to give it a bit of external texture. So eventually they're going to be on each of those four corners there, which means I can put the two by eights on next like that and some grill pieces on each end because that's where those doors are going to be that we talked about earlier. Okay. So it'll be like that. And then the doors I've got are just the normal train doors that actually come with that um, uh, Ghost Train Express set, 70424. But I've got, rather than the trans uh, black or trans dark brown uh, glass, I've gone for trans medium, or rather trans light blue rather, get it right, uh, because I think that looks a bit more ghostly. So they aren't gonna stay on yet, but I've got one on that end and I've got the other side one to go on that end because what I want them to be able to do is to be openable so I can kind of have ghosts sort of hanging out or pouring out or something like that. So those are the doors that we're going to be using. Uh, and I've deliberately left this rather large space at the moment because that's the space that the big malevolent ghost is going to be pouring out of with his clawed hands and his big face. So what I'll do first or rather next is um, build up these three sides, which will be a lot more in keeping with our past or current subway train. Uh, and then we can do all of the really interesting bit after that. Okay, so the first layer I'm gonna put on is just a layer of black bricks. And I decided against the kind of dark red color or the spring green or all sorts of other colors because in the end, I thought just black would work a lot better. And obviously it ties in with things like these doors, but also makes the trans colors stand out a lot more. And I think that's probably more important. So I've just put on some modified bricks as well. So we've got a pair of those grabbers because we're going to have the window layer after that. Uh, and then a one by one. And then I've got these Technic bricks with the two holes in. Can you see that? Uh, and I've put... Uh, some more trans light blue uh, one by one round plates into those just pushed in uh, so they can be the kind of headlights. So I've got that feature on my other train as well, but again, not with these colors. So I'll do that on the other side as well. Uh, and then we can get some nice train windows in. So I've got the black windows with, yep, you guessed it, trans light blue coloring as well. Oh, but before I put those on, I need to put on my three colored stripe, don't I? Uh, now, this is a place where I was able to use the muted colors uh, and I managed to get the right pieces in dark red, light bluish gray, and then dark blue in place of the normal red, white, and normal blue. So that kind of looks really old and subdued, I think, version of the same color palette. It's just really unfortunate I couldn't get those colors for the station itself because I think that'd look really good and a few people suggested that on part two as well but anyway we've got it here if those parts ever do become available in the uh, two by two round brick then I will uh, get some and replace them so I'll have to keep looking out for those uh, but here are our train windows and the good thing is another good thing 
uh, is that in black they're very commonly available because the more weird a train colour uh, color train window you try and get, the harder it is to get hold of, quite frankly. So there we go. Now we do have these sort of slight holes at the end, but they kind of look like windows and our other train has that as well. So that's fine. But you can start to see it looking a bit more train-like. And I can hold all that together with some 1x8 bricks. And I'm going to have some uh, more headlights on the front, this time with the 1x1 one one around tile, just to have that either side of the door. So there we go. That's the back largely done. Now this is where the doors will come in in due course. So there you go. They are just going to probably fall over straight away. There we go. Uh, but you see that that means that it's all this lovely uh, sort of spooky ethereal colour. I mean, it does look very ghostly already, if you ask me. So we've got those uh, waiting. So I'll just do the same on the sides as well. So we've got the headlight there, the one by one, and then the one by one modified brick there. Uh, and then we've got, oh, yep, stripe. Keep forgetting the stripes. There we go. Just got another little segment of it there. A couple more of the windows. One more of those tiled headlights on the front. A one by two. And then this is where it varies a little bit more. I've got a modified brick here. I'm actually going to put it side on. So it's kind of unsupported a little bit at the moment, but that will get fixed in due course. And that is going to start supporting some of our uh, snot technique. So studs not on top, that stands for, uh, where we're going to start to sort of build a kind of a, a spooky frame for the goings on uh, within. Mm, very interesting. So there is the same construct already built just in one piece with another one of those modified bricks there. Uh, and then I can actually add our sort of detailing, 3D detailing, which is not so much a handrail now, I suppose, because uh, the doors are on the ends. Now, I'm not sure if you got on at the ends in the uh, old style train carriages or what, but I think you might have done actually. Uh, but either way, I think they also look good in, yep, you guessed it, trans light blue. So it's quite fragile at the moment. It will get a lot stronger when it's got its roof on. Uh, but I'm just trying to get those all aligned. So there we go. Our basic train, let me just hold one of the doors in place for us looking at it for a moment. And you'll see we've got this lovely ghost train look, if you ask me. It's very familiar with its uh, three colored stripe and its kind of rough shape. But these different colors really work well. So that's my original idea coming into effect on the back, which after all, we aren't going to see a great deal because we're always going to be looking at the front and the very interesting scene that's going to be in this window. Great. So just for a little detailing, I'm thinking of putting a sticker on each of these black doors and that will be the one in that Ghost Train Express set 70424. I've got the sheet here. So that will be just these two black ones just to give it a number. They're a bit scuffed and ghostly, so I reckon that'll work rather well, and it won't add too much uh, detail or anything that won't look appropriate for our build. Uh, who knows, I might get these scratch ones on somewhere as well, but I think that'll look good. So I'll do that next, uh, and then we can start focusing on this more interesting middle area. All right, so they're looking really good, I think. Quite subtle, but quite cool. So it just adds a bit of detail. And as I said, I think these are going to be flung open half the time, so you won't see them. Uh, in fact, you might never see those stickers again. But nonetheless, <laughs> I quite like adding details, even when they're not uh, fully available, because if somebody ever does notice them, it's even more impressive anyway. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to move on to the inside now. Put those to one side for a moment. Um, and what we need in here is the large malevolent ghost face and claws, of course. So the first thing I'm going to put in is just this construct here, which is just some quite battered old bricks, but that doesn't matter because they're in black and we're not going to see them. And loads of these modified plates. So you see I've got the uh, horizontal grabbers, but I've got the ones on one by one, uh, on, on one by two plates, and then one by one plates over here, uh, and then one by two plate again. And it just creates this staggered thing for four fingers on each side to be attached in due course. So I'm hoping you can sort of see what I've done there. There we go. That's probably a really good view of it. Uh, but that will be the, probably the last thing we add, but we need to put that in now. So that's our 
base for the fingers to be held onto. Now we need the face in the front. Uh, but before I put that on, I'm just going to start with the trans um, uh, neon green tiles because I want them to form the very base layer. And if I don't put them in now, uh, they won't uh, fit later. So I'm going to do that now. So there's a grill one in the middle and two one by fours. And I've got some normal bricks and the one by two by five just to secure this area. Rogue hair there, get rid of that. Don't need that in our build. So now I've put those in and that's just to ensure that there isn't too much light coming in from the side and just to give it a bit of structure as well. So that's good. So this black, we won't really be able to see anything. It will just be sort of hidden and we'll just be able to see the colors that are, are brighter, uh, that will really pop hopefully against that black background. So the lower jaw is fairly self-explanatory, I hope, just made out of all these different spring green teeth pieces and the double curved uh, slope there, one by four. And that lower jaw piece is just gonna fit in there. Uh, and I tried all sorts of things for the back of the mouth because having it just black didn't look quite right somehow. And I tried all sorts of trans pieces and considered having it lit from behind and all the rest of it, though that would have been a right pain because I've had two switches for this whole device and all the rest of it. But anyway, uh, what I decided upon was just green. Uh, so that's just a, a one by two by three green panel in kind of a frame. And although it doesn't look crazy spectacular at the moment, the fact is that when it's in there and it's got everything else around it, it really looks like a sort of horrid green open mouth. So that's what that is. Very good. Uh, and then for the top jaw, I've got this set up and it looks a bit bland at the moment and a bit goofy actually, but there's his teeth, top lip, and his eyes will be on these round tiles in black. So there we go. So that looks like that. Now it's quite hard to picture at the moment because he doesn't have any eyes on but he'll also have kind of an eyebrow piece on top of this, and that'll give him that really angled, malevolent look. If you remember our picture, it was quite important that he had this sort of strong brow that pointed down into the middle because that made him look really angry. So what I've got there is this piece made out of uh, wedge plates on a bracket piece, and that actually connects to the roof, so I'll have to hold it in place, but we'll go... Go it's so hard to show you this black on black. There we go. That will go over the eyes like that. Very good. So what I really need, though, is for those eyes to be very visible and kind of stare right back at us in a scary way. And what I've got for that is a few different hidden side stickers. So the first one is a pair of eyes from the uh, Newbury Abandoned Prison, 70435. And these are good, but they've kind of already got the brow on them. Uh, so they're already sort of partially closed. And they look, well, a bit dark, actually. So what I think I'm going to use is the similar pair of eyes, these ones, which are a lot sort of lighter and more spring greeny, uh, from the Haunted Fairground 70432 set. Uh, and I think a pair of those on those tiles will look, <laughs> well, a bit goofy again there, but he looks fun, doesn't he? But imagine when that's got a brow on as well. It'll look more like that. And then he starts to look a bit angry, actually. I remember this uh, train is very angry because he's been caged in this uh, station and he's bouncing around and he's uh, representing all the souls that lost, uh, that were lost in a, in a horrible crash in the past. So I think having him looking like that will be really good. So I'm going to use those stickers next to stick on those tiles That'll have to wait for a little bit uh, and then we can start to decorate the sides around this monster and then add the roof and fingers. Cool. Well, I must say he does look very goofy at the moment. He doesn't look scary at all. <laughs> he looks quite like a friendly ghost, doesn't he? But um, if I just add that brow, oh, look at that. He's suddenly become very nasty indeed. Very angry and aggressive. I think I've got the orientation of those stickers right though. Uh, obviously, with them being round, you could put them in any old position, essentially, on those tiles, and they'll just have the pupils pointing in a slightly different direction. But I think having the pupils slightly covered and a lot of the spring green colour showing will be the best of both worlds. So I like that. So he's looking pretty angry in there, if you ask me. 
So that will connect on the train roof, as I say. Uh, so the next bit I need to do is do these sides, which are going to connect onto these uh, modified bricks here. And what I've used is all of the trans neon bits and bobs that I've collected over the last few brick hauls. So I've got a few slopes, a one by two slope there, two by two slopes there, these cheese wedge pieces all over the place, and these one by four tiles as well, because there aren't many pieces that are available in this color, but they really will shine when we um, put some UV light onto them. So here is similar pieces, but a different setup, and I've just done it kind of randomly, just so it looks uh, a bit kind of natural, I suppose. So by putting those on, I mean, he looks goofy as well. I can barely look at him when he looks like that. There we go. If I hold that in place, you see now he's he's kind of in a, I don't know, a ghostly spot. Maybe he's made a ghostly uh, hole in the wall and he's halfway through peering out of his uh, prison of this um, carriage uh, and halfway out onto the platform attacking people. Who knows? But I think that looks quite good. And remember, we're going to have all the fingers clawing out, which is why we've left uh, access to those clips that we added earlier. Yeah, so that's looking pretty good. Right, so here we go with a UV light, which really reflects off that neon wonderfully well, doesn't it? It's a pity it doesn't actually glow on these pieces, which almost look like they should be glow in the dark, but aren't. But look at that. So that's with the UV light, that's without. So I think this whole scene could be temporarily lit up with UV light to really show it off to its very best. But that's making it look extra ethereal, if you ask me. Cool. Uh, right, so uh, that to one side. So now we need to add the roof. And as I said uh, before, I'm just using curved slopes for this. And I got loads on my last few hauls just to get enough because there aren't that many around, it seems. And that's just to give it a bit of variety from uh, previous uh, my previous train. So that will go on here. But before I push it down, I need to attach the brow onto the underside, which is why we've got this sort of little gap in there. Uh, and I also need to sort of balance in place the doors because they'll be pinned in position by this roof. So we'll get the right one on each side because I do want to have sort of conductors still hanging out of this train or the train, old train driver maybe or something like that, much like I did on my LDD uh, file because I think that will be ooh, a really good ooh, a really good look still. Uh, always hard to do this sort of thing on camera, but it seems to have worked, so that's good. So those doors open and close, and there he is with the brow held in place. Oh yeah, he looks very spooky indeed. I like that a lot. Ooh, what do you think? That looks good. We've got the numbers on the end, and the back, if we were ever to look at it, it's a bit plain, but we're really not going to see it. I don't even why I put these on, to be honest. Uh, but it still looks good from that angle. Now, there's a few more things to do. One is to put on some 1x4 brown tiles onto these two ends. And that's because I want to kind of uh, add a number badge to each end. I know we've got this number, but I figured that uh, that might be the number of the kind of train from the train company's perspective. But I thought also I might want to um, add a, another specific sort of train line number. And I thought this one was quite a good one. So this is the sticker sheet from the Newbury subway set, 70430. Uh, and it's got this number 30T. So maybe that was the number of the train that had the horrible accident. Now I've only got one of these sheets. So I'll only be able to do one of these today, but I do have another one coming in the hall that will be opening on Wednesday. So fingers crossed it's in there because <laughs> I need it. Uh, and that one can go on the other end because uh, I think it'd be good to have one on each side. And maybe I can use some of these stickers elsewhere in my uh, subway station. So yeah, I'll add them. Uh, and then I need to make a decision because I've got another sticker from the Newbury Haunted High School set which I thought I might use, which is this long black one with the uh, kind of appropriate colouring of the uh, spring green there. And I thought I could, uh, maybe not, maybe it's better all black, but I could either add it to that brick layer there, or maybe even to the Duplo train base on that sort of layer there. And it might look like it was kind of flying or, I don't know, uh, just ghostly. Anyway, kind of put them both on 
end to ends that are like that. Uh, can't make up my mind. I might try it because the good thing is, because of uh, how many I needed for my subway station, is I've actually got three of these sheets. So if I did put them on and hate them, I could always uh, take them off again. So I might use one pair of them as well. So I'm going to do the stickers for all of that. And then the only thing that will remain, which will be la pièce de résistance, uh, will be the fingers. Uh, apologies for my terrible French accent. Now I've moved my camera back down to a lower level just because I think that that captures it a bit better, doesn't it? So I put those stickers on, as I said, and I think I quite like it. I think when the platform is kind of hiding that much train, uh, it'll look like maybe it's floating. I don't know. Maybe not, <laughs> but we can only uh, try it and hope. But I think it looks good. Uh, and there's that number 30T, which I definitely like, because it kind of looks a bit yesteryear -y, So it kind of adds to the idea that this could be a really old train version of uh, the modern one. So I will have another one of those in due course on there. So it only remains for us to add our spooky fingers. Now, as you may have guessed, if you are familiar with a lot of Lego parts, I'm going to use these sort of bony uh, skeleton type fingers. Uh, and for each one, I've added on one of these pieces, which is kind of a, well, it goes on a bar piece end and it kind of turns it into a horizontal bar so it can be used on a clip. So let's, add these onto here. So we've got one, two, oh, looking pretty good. Three, let's do the top one there and get it on. Ooh. There we go, three. So they don't all take that long to do. Four, and you can see I can kind of angle these down to really sort of make it look very hand-like. And this is the reason for having them on those clips in that pattern was so they'd all look a bit more kind of like a hand because you haven't got four fingers that are all completely in the same position. So I can make these look very creepy indeed, hopefully. Uh, and you start to see now, hopefully, why I couldn't have this whole train disappearing down uh, the tunnels uh, of my haunted subway station uh, and that's because these fingers are going to get in the way they're going to hit the edges of the tunnel arches and so on and um, I could make the tunnel arches way bigger to accommodate but then they're just going to be a huge great big hole on each side and I think that probably be worse so let's see let's see how to angle these how about that looking good I think so. Wow, that looks great. So that's going to be the angle that we're going to be seeing nine tenths of the time. And that's why I really took the focus away when I was doing that design uh, from doing something interesting on the front, because you just never see it, uh, to doing something really interesting on the side, because that's what we see all the time. So although the front is very pretty, and I really like it, and it looks ethereal with this blue, the bright spring and neon green of the side with those fingers and that malevolent face kind of peering out at us. You can just imagine it making a horrible noise. In fact, it makes the horrible noise this train base makes, of course, which is that horrible screech and a horn. Uh, and you can even see that really nice green. Do you see what I mean now? That green in the mouth uh, really adds to it now, that normal green colour, as a good contrast to the other greens that are in the area. So there we go. I think that is a bit of a wonderful train. Maybe we should set it going for a bit and you can hear the horrible noise. In fact, why don't I get the uh, base from before? In fact, I'm not sure this is going to work now because I've actually cannibalized some of the pieces, but let's give it a go. There's the horrible noise it makes. Oh, it's come off the end and that's because I've got it on back to front. Let's try it again. No, that way. There we go. That is a horrible noise made by a very angry and possessed train. <laughs> but I think you'll agree that the, um, the look of it is just 
perfect. I mean, it's, it's totally my building style. It's not at all lifelike, no, but it is good fun. And I think that's what Lego is all about. I don't mind things like this big toe bar because it's a toy after all. It is Lego, not real life. And um, having something hilarious fun like this with these wonderful skeleton fingers sort of ripping a hole in the whole fabric of reality to come out through this sort of train portal from the supernatural side into our world uh, is just amazing. So maybe this is a horrible, huge beast that's being summoned by Neymar Reem into uh, the um, underground station. And the Ghostbusters will have to beat this guy. Well, I'll probably take all four of them because he's pretty much the boss character, if you ask me. <laughs> yeah, you think Neymar Reem might have been the boss, but I think it just might be this guy. Anyway, uh, I won't put this in the station today, uh, and that might make you all groan because you want to see it in the station to date. But that station is in, well, not one piece, let's say, because I'm experimenting with a few of your suggestions at the moment. So I'll bring this wonderful train and that wonderful station together with all of your amendments and a few things I've thought of uh, into the Lego room with loads of minifigures all about and probably the Ghostbusters uh, next time. So, yeah, looking forward to your comments on this one. <laughs> So I think that's been a great success. Uh, I'm very excited to go and put this on the track and play with it, to be quite frank with you, uh, because it looks absolutely fantastic, if you ask me. Uh, I was very keen to get this built because I hadn't actually built it before uh, building it with you. I had all the pieces. It takes a lot of restraint to do that, but uh, <laughs> it does mean that I get the same reaction you do. Uh, and you can see that with all of the stickers we've added as well, I think this just looks absolutely amazing. I'm so chuffed with it. Uh, uh, I've only really seen it in LDD and it's always better in the flesh. I love all these bright colors we've got. I like how sort of chunky it is, now sort of solid. Uh, and when I've got ghosts hanging out of both of the doors, I think it'll be even better. Yeah, it looks really good. So, as always, thank you very much for watching. It is appreciated. Do remember to like, comment and subscribe for more awesome LEGO videos. And if you do value this channel, there are many ways in which you can support it including a new Amazon affiliate link, which costs you nothing, but just gives me a small commission. So thanks if you plan to use that. So next time on Robin Hood Bricks, we'll be doing a brick haul, which will also include the final sticker, hopefully, for this build. Uh, and uh, then on Friday, we'll be doing part four of this haunted subway build, uh, which will be on Halloween's Eve. I had thought of moving it to Halloween night itself, but I figured you might all be up to something else instead, even in these interesting times. But uh, either way, until Wednesday or Friday, see you!